So this is all the stock that we have done right now. Not very much. We have two sets of end tables, a couple ladders. These are our big items in a couple wall decors that I already have similar in the booth. And this is just our small storage area for our inventory. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab and I have a working weekend for myself here. We are almost out of wall decor. Wonderful thank you moment for our open house. And actually we didn't even sell any wall decor at the open house. It sold the week after. So I, yeah, I don't want my walls and our booths to look bare. So instead of doing Christmas for you all, which I really wanted to get to, I need to take a weekend and get some wall decor done before sharing Christmas with you all. And I know there are so many wonderful, talented YouTubers out there and that you are enjoying all their Christmas ideas. So let's get to some wall decor. And you're all just going to be seeing bits and pieces of the workshop because that is where I am spending 90% of my days now is out in this workshop. So blessed to have heat. So one of the things that I've been wanting to do, and there's another where you have the idea, but the birds oh my gosh i know i've seen all of you guys do birds you know i did the picnic baskets with the uh, um french country animals um absolutely love those good reviews there but i've been wanting to do the birds so i want to do the whole line of the birds so you just you yeah so i have it i'm like okay but now i need something to do it on so ran across this piece it is a hobby lobby piece but look how long it is it is perfect for that bird the bird the bird lineup i guess let's call it the bird lineup so yes i'm just super excited now i don't want to put them on the black but when i was doing some trays i was like oh i've been looking for newspaper print but i had forgotten that i had this tissue paper that I had purchased from hobby lobby i just did a tray with it and I have plenty of it to actually do that old. It won't, the whole piece won't fit on this um, wall decor. So I'll have to piece it together, but I'm super excited about being able to finally use that those birds. Cause I just know that, uh, yeah, those birds are just absolutely gorgeous. So I said, I'm just bringing you all along. So another project that I've been wanting to do, um, using this stamp set from IOD. Oh my goodness. Now I saw the ladies do the mirror effect with this stamp set. Fell in love with it. I want to try to reproduce their beautiful work. So I'm sure they will do much better than me. But I ran across, look at this. It is just a new purchase piece <laughs> that to made to look old. It was $5.09, but look, at it's got the glass that I need. It's got that beautiful, beautiful frame. So I'm super excited. I always give God me moments when I have an idea and I'm able to find, because now, usually I just find the frames and it's not cost efficient to have glass cut. So having a piece that I can take that home sweet home out and do, oh, I'm so, I'm so super excited to be able to test this out. So do you all remember this piece? Um, yeah, mirror, you're gonna see me. So I did this piece, I redid it. It was that coral color that Kelly, the viewer, gave me all her wonderful stuff. And then I had a viewer suggest, you know, because there's so much damage at the bottom of it to do like a transfer on it. So I'm like, whoa, hold on, let me flip my light so I'm not shaking. Anyway, this is the darkest corner of the shop here, guys. So, Yes, so I thought I have some of this leftover transfer that I've actually used this part on. So I'm going to see if this would work on the bottom of this mirror before I put it in to sell it. Because I think this would, this would be quick if I can achieve it if it fits. So you never know until you go to do it if it's going to fit or not. And then, let's see. And then we have this. Look, I just thrifted this this week. 10.09. <laughs> just I don't know it's a nice beautiful arch piece absolutely love it so I'll just give it a new paint job 
Look at it. home interiors. You go home interiors. Yes, beautiful arch. Keep the box right on there. Those always, those always sell when I repaint them. And then I got 1009. Oh, so, oh, look at it. I have to go all the way back for you to fit this piece in. Um, Hobby Lobby piece. But once you paint these Hobby Lobby pieces up, it just takes them to another level. So. I, when I first saw it at the thrift store, I thought, oh my gosh, yeah, they're going to want 25 bucks for it or something. But no, 1009, so perfect. This will be, this will be nice. So I have a couple other pieces that I'm going to tweak a little bit, go into my stash of some mirrors. I'll probably separate it a little bit. Um, mirrors aren't too bad. Mirrors are nice because if you can find them with a whole bunch of detail, they're just a nice statement piece. And then when I don't have pieces that take me a little bit longer. It's nice to fill in with mirrors until they sell. So let's see how it goes. So I'm going to get started right off with this beautiful mirror though. I think it is beautiful, but I love that viewer suggestion. I'm sorry, I don't, I didn't go back through comments to figure out what your name was, but thank you for the idea. And yes, I do have some of these transfers in my stash that have just been sitting around and could definitely be used up. I will share with you that I did that floral on a lap tray and it never sold. Actually, I brought it back home before the open house to put some other trays in there. Florals do not sell for me. So I'm happy that I just have wording left for this mirror. But I definitely think that this is more of a gray transfer. But I think that gray, that milk paint that I had done this on will be beautiful. And then I'm sorry that I'm working in the door darkest corner of our workshop. I, I don't know why this is such a dark corner, but yes, look at this wording fits perfectly. I think that the little fluted, let's call it fluted, I don't know what to call those little swirly decor pieces, definitely match that top of the mirror. Now all I have to do is take off that backing and get to rubbing. That is definitely one thing about these transfers when it comes to glass. They really stick really well. So you want to make sure that you have it centered where you want before laying it down. So I took that backing off and I'm just going over a little bit gingerly making sure that it, making sure that all the pieces were attached and they're not going to shift as I start to use my little wooden piece that they give you to transfer the image onto whatever it is that you're transferring on it just happens to be a mirror that I'm doing. As you're working on transferring the lettering, the image down, you can kind of tell it's not attached to that plastic piece anymore. It'll kind of have a cloudy look to it so you know that it's starting to transfer. And as I'm working, I just start to pull that up and I can tell what pieces and parts are not transferred yet. That way, you know, you don't want to just rip it off because all those pieces and parts are not transferred yet. Well, and that only took minutes to make a beautiful statement piece. Now, the transfers usually need something to seal them in a little bit. Um, and I am going to go for a little bit of this gold with a little bit of natural wax to seal it in. On some of the spots that show through that have aged this mirror, there's a little bit of gold. And I know that it probably won't pick up a lot of the gold, but I just thought, you know what? I wonder if a little bit of pieces and parts of this transfer will pick up that gold. <laughs> up is this black palette frame now we already put the palette wood in is is just the frame itself and then it didn't sell they sold before like this who knows then i added one of these dollar spot wreaths it'd been in there a while but now that's more of a fall looking wreath to me so then that didn't sell so then i brought it back home and now i'm doing this this is inspired by another piece that kelly gave me that metal galvanized wreath with the galvanized all in one piece but i can't find that piece so this is my creation of going to hobby lobby getting this wooden piece a wreath and then another one of their metal gathers and so I'm going to go ahead and just paint this black frame up white just using my kills paint and primer. I 
really want you to notice this wreath, but I wanted to fit in with my theme and I toyed with green, but nah, no, no, no. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and just spray paint it up. This is that really dry wood. So one coat of this black Rust-Oleum paint and primer will do just fine. Then after two coats of the White Kills Paint Primer White, it's just, uh, it's our flat, our go-to paint since the test of time of a starting ginger chick. Now I'm just going in and distressing this piece and letting some of that black show through. I'm gonna go ahead and seal that black in. After it dried, it soaks and dries really fast. So I'm just using the Rust-Oleum and the Clear Matte Spray. I trust this for wood because it soaks into the wood. And then after that is dry, I was gonna go in and start just to hand sand it, but it's that, oh, I don't know. I'm like, oh, that's gonna take me way, way too long. So then I'm like, I wonder if I can use my orbital sander and just go in really gingerly to get this piece distressed. So I held on to that piece and did not let it um, take off and fly like a frisbee. That worked out just fine. I actually love how it distressed and I love those areas where it distressed even more because it's really going to make my watered down antiquing wax just pop. Now you could, I could have just used the straight antiquing wax, but like I said, this piece is so dry it might take it to that brown state a little too much so I'm using my watered down version where I have a pickle jar full of water a cup of or a quarter cup of antiquing wax the Waverly antiquing wax and a spoonful of the black ink Waverly chalk paint that is my watered down mixture and then if I wanted to then I can go back in after it has soaked that in with a little bit of antiquing wax if I want to pop it a little bit more so now I'm just measuring off and making sure my wreath is centered before using Chris's new tool. Yes, he needed another tool, but we were doing a laundry room um, makeover that I had been wanting for years. Let me tell you, years. And so he needed a cordless brad nailer to, so you didn't have to hook up to the air compressor. So I'm actually just testing it out. This is a perfect opportunity for me. And what a nice tool. I know I've saw other YouTubers use this. It is nice. I'm just going to be gluing using some CA glue with the accelerator to glue the gather down. So I just set it down, kind of eyeball where it is going to be touching on the wood. These little galvanized pieces are very thin. It doesn't take too much to attach them. So I just find the spots where the two are attaching and glue those spots. funny when you're doing a wall decor how much space that takes up I am have wall decor on every single table in our workshop and some extra tables that I pulled into our spray room because I need to get these pieces sprayed up so for a base coat I'm just going in with the that rust-oleum paint and primer and the flat black this is that it has got the metal mixture the arched little box is a resin metal um, so this is what I find is the best to pre-paint for my undercoat. So, yep, I, since I have been stepping outside of my box so much on my videos lately, I am going to be mixing the white linen chalk paint in with some of the chiffon chalk paint. I'm trying to match up that drop cloth that I had by Dixie Bell that I just recently used in a couple of recent videos. I absolutely love that color, though I have to order the Dixie Bell colors to have it delivered, but here I, I, I can, yeah, I can buy them off the shelf. So I'm just doing a 50-50 ratio because I really I fell in love with that drop cloth color. So I'm just going to make sure that this is totally mixed together and I'm really loving that color. And then I'll go in and I'll add some of my water to water it down because I'm going to be using my Graco 2 True Coat 360 handheld sprayer to spray those two these two pieces. It's just the easiest, especially when it comes to all those pieces and parts and then I don't have to worry about drip.
give this piece some age I'm going to go in with the orbital sander I'm not going to push down heavily I'm not taking the paint off I just want it to de distress those sharp edges letting it hit, hit the corners letting it just take a lot of that paint off I'd actually let this sit overnight so hand sanding would have been a lot of work parts were the galvanized metal I'm just gonna go over and hand sand I've got some 220 sandpaper I don't want to take the orbital sander because the orbital sander probably will take it right back down to that metal I just want to go to the black Now I need to get these sealed in. This is a chalk paint. The Rust-Oleum needs to be seal sealed in. So after all that sanding, I'm just going to go ahead and use the air compressor, blow all that sanding dust off, and just seal them in using some Rust-Oleum clear coat in matte so they're not shiny. So I did think that little box underneath the arch just needed a little bit of something. So since I had these IOD transfers already in our workshop because I had done the little birdies, I'm like, oh, let's see if they have something that will fit in this space. And they do. The same procedure as putting the birdies on as this little transfer was. So I just need to now seal this in with a little misting of this clear coat also. Now, after removing the hardware on this piece, I'm just going in, I got it all taped off. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a couple coats of that Kills Paint Primer. I just like to start off with a fresh base. After my two coats have dried, I'm going in with the Orbital Sander and I'm gonna go ahead and get this distressed. I don't mind that it distresses just a little bit more. That's why I'm going in with the Orbital Sander. It's just a control thing. If you wanna hand sand it, it doesn't do as much, but I do wanna go a little bit deeper on my, and it saves my hand by using the Orbital Sander. So I'm just running across those sharp edges and then really letting it hit those corners. So now we're on to doing the decoupage. So yeah, back to that old day of school where you tore up paper and put it in the paste substance. It's kind of like what I'm doing. You guys, you guys remember doing that back in the school days. But on this one, I'm going to make sure that I keep my corner pieces, my straight edges, because that manufacturer's cut is always way better than my cut. So, but I'm just going to do here and there not really concentrating that my wording's all going the same way it's just supposed to be random so I'm just kind of getting an idea of what how big I want the pieces to be and what the statement I didn't bother to paint over this black I think it's supposed to be a chalkboard though I can see I washed it off and I could see the lettering it were actually wouldn't make a very good chalkboard because I don't think it would come off very well I played a little bit. I have an idea in my head. I'm just going to be using Mod Podge to glue it down. And yep, just going to keep those straight edges at the corners. And yep, just going to have some fun with it. So now that I have it all glued down, I actually ran the Mod Podge over the top of it too. And now I'm just going to walk away and let it dry. So ever since I received these beautiful brocade transfers from the Painted Heirloom Vonda store, I will link her down in the description. Amazing shipping, amazing customer service, you guys. So, oh my goodness, I have been on the search for something to use these line of birds on. Do you all ever get that I know what I want to do, but I don't have the product to do it, and so you're on the hunt? So this is exactly the, what my vision was. I wanted some kind of a newspaper, wordage, print. I wanted it to be exactly what I did on the back of it to put these beautiful birds. I wanted something to accentuate these beautiful birds, but I didn't want to take away from them. So all I did here was make sure that I found my center point so that I'm centered 
right from the get-go. So, and now it's just that rub-a-dub-dub. And I wasn't sure how it would do on top of the uh, Mod Podge, but it seems to be transferring perfectly. And the nice thing about this transfer is that plastic piece on top that you're releasing them for is so stiff that I didn't have to worry about it going wonky. Just like doing that mirror, after I go through and try to rub as much as I can first, then I will start releasing that top plastic piece and making sure that all the little pieces and parts are transferred. You don't want to just rip that off and think that <laughs> it's all attached. Yet, yeah, just go a little bit gingerly and making sure that there might just be a little bit of a beak or a little bit of a feather that's just not. So lay it back down and just do a little bit more rubbing. Okay, can we just take a moment and breathe this all in? Oh my gosh, just that detail is gorgeous. So if you're wondering why I didn't lay both pieces down at the same time, I want my branch to match up. So I had to wait till I have the first piece down so that I can butt up that branch and make sure that it's staying at level. And though I thought it needed just a little bit more, there's these French words. I do not speak French. It has something to do with poultry, but I did not use that when I did the ba the picnic basket ones. So poultry has something to do with eggs. I, I did look it up, but I don't remember right offhand, but I think it's just fine to go with these birds. I just need to bring this piece all together and I knew as soon as I saw that tissue paper it was a little too yellowy cream for me so I'm going in I will be going in with the Waverly antiquing wax that always seems to be my go-to to rescue and tie my pieces together and then just in case it goes too dark I have my natural clear wax as my backup so I'm going to start right off with in one of the corners and see how the this tissue paper and the frame take. I absolutely love antiquing wax on white paint. It's just, whew, I already knew the frame was going to get this and then I was going to fade it in just like I did some of those trays and some of my other decoupage papers that I've done on a lot of other items lately, just blending it and fading it into that inner image. This is also another reason I don't want my paper completely flat and smooth. I want my antiquing wax to get all those little crinkles. I want my antiquing wax to stick on those. So I purposely do not make them flat. And I'll go ahead and take off the paint off the back after I got that all the way that I wanted it on the front. There's always, when you tape off the back, there's always where that paint builds up and it leaves that hard, crusty edge. And I just take a few minutes, take that tape off, and take some sandpaper and get that hard, crusty edge sand off so it's nice and smooth. And then before putting the hardware back on the front of the piece, I'm going to go ahead and put a new hanging system. And I am not a fan of the two trying to figure out two different screws or nails in your wall. I'm just going to attach so the person that buys this can just hang it on the wall with a wire and only have to have one thing in their wall. So I did toy with the idea of painting the hardware black, but there's so much brown on these birds that all I did was go back in with a little bit of um, some silver spray just on a piece of rag. And then I went in with my black wax and just took these up a notch from that manufactured fakie antiquing to just something that would complement these birds. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reattach these fake hinges. Now I have to take apart this. It's a beautiful frame. It looks old. Everything about it looks old. But the funny is the paper inside 
<laughs> there, yeah, I, I'm a little confused by this piece, but I was definitely happy to find it in a thrift store. So I'm just taking off that wire that was already there, and then I'm going to proceed to remove all this paper backing. Even these nails scream that this should be a different age of paper inside this. Gingerly going to set this glass off to the side and work on painting the frame first. I'm going to be using the Milk Paint by Rust-Oleum in the Eclipse color. I know there's so much detail on this beautiful frame that I'm going to want to distress it. And I'm using one of the brushes that I got off Amazon. It's a nice soft bristle. I've got a lot of detail to get into. So this brush is definitely my go-to for this kind of frame. Took two coats of this black to cover this frame. Now I'm only going in and water distressing and using a little bit of sandpaper just on the areas with all that detail. I want that bronzy gold to show through. And to seal this frame in, since it is wood, I'm going to go ahead and use that Rust-Oleum and Clear Coat in matte. My milk paint needs to be sealed in. Just like that bird frame, finding the piece to fit the birds, I had been looking for a piece of frame that I loved with a piece of glass in it to do this ever since I checked out the Iron Orchid design. I ran across looking for when I was pre-doing those mirrors and the first video um, of how to do the mirror effect, I ran across their video of stamping and I fell in love with this stamp set and definitely wanted to do my version of their beautiful work. flowers just have so much detail on them though the video I saw they had a little bit more planar of a frame and then they were doing the flowers coming from the side in I'm going to do mine from the middle kind of going out because I have so much beautiful detail on the frame that I found but I, I'm hoping that I will be happy with how this turns out and this is where those mask the things that overlay on top of your stamp so you can stamp over a stamp that's already been there will come in handy. Unfortunately, I do think that this stamp set is retired, but go check out Vonda's store, Painted Heirloom, see if she has any more left if you're interested in this beautiful flower stamp set. So I'm just, as you see, every single one of the stamps itself has a mask to go with it. And if you have a stamp set that doesn't have masks with it, all you have to do is buy some vellum off of Amazon, stamp onto it, and cut around the image, and you can have your own masks. So now I'm going to make sure that my glass is good and clean using my old faithful of the Norex cleaning cloth to make sure that it, there's no product on there that's going to prevent my stamp from adhering. So I was trying to get the best viewing area so you could see what I was doing. Like I said, I have, I have product on every one of our work tables with a couple other resin tables set up trying to get wall to color done. So I just got, now I have the stays on ink pad, but I will admit to you that I do refill it with the IOD ink. I really just need to invest in an IOD stamp pad. Anyway, so I'm making sure that I get all these little pieces and parts of this beautiful flower inked up. Okay, now that y'all you saw the close-up of my hair and not how I was trying to center the stamp, I'm using that thin mount because it has the grid pattern and I can kind of eyeball to the sides. I'm just free flowing this one and um, yeah, just committed and then set it down. Now you got to be careful on glass because it does kind of slide. I do think my this was my third attempt of me washing one of them off and then I just had to decide this is as good as I'm going to get it. And so yep and now to put the mask on it though I need since it's just laying on glass and there's nothing to absorb the stamp ink in I need to go ahead and use something to dry it. So I started off using the blow dryer to help dry that ink. 
And then I actually did walk away for a bit, hoping that it was even more dry before <laughs> placing. Like I said, I had already washed it off three different times. Luckily that it doesn't absorb into glass. <laughs> so now I'm like, okay, I, I've got to move on to my next flower. So just commit Yvonne and put that mask on top of it. So the, see, this is why I wanted to use the mask because then I can overlay the flowers like they're popping behind and not stamping over a stamp. So yep, see how that, that works? That mask just, yes, these women are amazing with what they have come up with. So now I'm just re-eyeballing how I wanted everything to be so I can get my vision and just get stamping. Now, because of the space that I'm working in, I just actually stuck my stamp onto one of the pieces of vellums that came with the stamp set. The, I don't have a smaller stamping mount, so I'll, it's a little too cumbersome in the space that I'm working in. And at the angle that I wanted to use, yeah, you know, you use what you have. So, yep, here we go. Help dry that ink a little bit faster, I switched over to my heat gun. I don't know about you all, but oh, stamping a glass, that was a little bit on the stressful side. And I do feel it's not as crisp an image as I would want, but it's my first time ever doing it. And maybe I can learn a little bit differently as we go on. So sometimes you just have to say, this is that perfectly perfect and it's good enough. <laughs> so now I'm going to go ahead and make this mirror. So I've got my in my spray bottle, it's a 50-50 of vinegar, distilled vinegar and water. I've got my Rust-Oleum Mirror Effect spray paint. And now I'm going in and I'm just misting like the outer edges pieces with the mist. And it probably go a little bit on there, but misting my glass first. That's going to do, it's going to give that this mirror an aged look. It's not going to be a solid mirror. It's just going to make it look like it's worn over time. So where I misted the water, it, the mirror effect will not stick to it. Then after it is dry, I can go back in with the tissue and I can dab all those little water spots off. So for my next coat, I like to spray the Rust-Oleum mirror effect first and then mist it with the watered down vinegar. After playing with the mirror effect for a little bit on some other different projects, this is just the technique that has been working out for me. So then after that, I dab all the little water spots off and then I do one more, just a plain coat of the mirror effect on the whole entire back. And then I finish it up with spray painting the entire bl back black. Now it's time to put these two pieces together. See the age? I wonder if somebody changed this out. Uh, we know when you throw something, you really don't know the story behind it. So yep, just gingerly dropping that glass in. Does anybody hold their breath when they're playing with glass? You're like, I don't have an opportunity to fix it if my glass breaks. So then just using that cardboard paper, piece that came with on it and then these are little tabbies that we have bought off of Amazon there's many of things that we've had to use these on instead of trying to save those nails and renail it in this is the perfect product to hold these in place so yep I'm just going to eyeball where I had taken the nails off and then just screw these in and this will hold that back on to finish this piece off I'm going to be using the Dollar Tree paper bag or wrapping paper. This is just going to complete your piece. Then after hot gluing it on, I just take an X-Acto knife and cut the excess off.
And since I took the hanging system off this one too, I'm gonna go ahead and use these eyelet that I get off of Amazon too. It's just, it's nice to have all these products on hand, just measuring where I want them to be even on each side and then adding a wire. Thanks guys for watching today's video. I just finished up for the weekend. I hope that you enjoyed my wall decor makeover. Yep, I can't leave my walls empty in our retail booth. I just, I don't know, it just doesn't, wouldn't look right. So I was glad that I was able to take a weekend, get it done, and now I can move on to Christmas. And like always, please tell me if I have inspired you in any way, if what item that you liked that I had made over, and even sometimes taking some out of the booth that didn't sell, re remaking them over, seeing if I could pep them up a little bit or make them, I don't know, you know, so one times they sell, other times they don't sell. So let's just Trends are constantly changing and people are constantly looking for something a little bit different. So it's nice. I'll just bring it home and see what I can change it into. So I hope I have inspired you in that way. Don't get discouraged if you have a booth or you're trying to sell something on Marketplace or Etsy. It, it happens to us all. So thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you're new and checking out our content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to.